Hello there, everyone, and uh, welcome. I will be doing a much requested trapping video today. I have uh, put it off for a long time because personally, I do not like resetting my traps. It's quite annoying. But hopefully, this is helpful for people, and I decided I needed to reset them anyway. Because um, I, well, not recently, but got access to the royal trap, decided I need to be diligent and do a proper trapping session. So. First off, we will go ahead and talk about, um, I'll just go th quickly through the bonuses that apply to trapping, uh, world by world, um, things to consider, um, so yeah, let's just get into it. So first off in world one, we have statues, um, as far as statues go, the only one that really applies to it is the box statue, and you can get that by farming world three. It's kind of a pain to farm in my opinion, um, but it does help out, so if you can go farm those, go for it. <clears throat> the stamp that helps trapping the most is the Heidi Box stamp. You'll want to push this as high as you can, but it does have a uh, reduced effect at um, high levels, so it's not as important, though you still want to keep pushing it because it does slightly help still. Uh, and as well as the Purple Fraud stamp. So, And then this one helps XP, but that's less important. Um, next off, we have star signs. The uh, star signs, uh, the most important star sign is the Trapezoidberg star sign. And then after that, <laughs> technically the Agitagi star sign would be helpful towards um, your efficiency, but I'll be honest, agility's effect on catch or trapping efficiency is like really, really low, so. Honestly, I'm just going to go for skill XP gain and uh, skill XP gain. It, the both, like basically, you just want to make sure you have the critter one on the the one that gives you positive critters is insane. So definitely want that one. Next up in World Two, we have the big bubble being the most important. This one acts as a plus one trap, so you can place one more trap, and it gives you a gigantic um, trapping efficiency bonus. Uh, end game, it's fairly easy to push this um, bubble as well. You can just print a lot of logs compared to other skills, so you want to make sure that is on your character. I am on the character. You want to equip it while you're placing traps. Um, and as far as the other elk bonuses go, the because I catch them all is a decent upgrade you want to have, and um, the Sanic Tools upgrade, and then Bubble 2 obviously affects those as well. So. And then the the last bubble or uh, Primagreen helps Sanic Tools, which then in turn helps your trapping efficiency. So the other things in World 2 will be Obels. I actually don't have any Obels right now for trapping. I uh, recently deleted them. Well, not recently, I guess a, a while ago. I was running out of space, but I've since cleaned out my Obel storage. And uh, yeah, it's... I will have to go farm up another trapping set. So, I don't have those at the moment. They do help a good amount, but trapping efficiency in general has a pretty low effect on how many cr uh, critters you're catching. Uh, you definitely want them, and if you can, if you have the space, like the storage space for them, I would definitely go for it. It's just, I didn't at the moment, so. But, you know, know that the obols are there. They're pretty good. You'll definitely want them if you're trying to push catching. Or trapping, sorry. I'm going to say catching a lot. Sorry about that. Uh, next off, we have the post office box, uh, the trapping one. Uh, you just want to max it. It's The trapping efficiency is decent, and the critters trapped is insane. So, um, Myriad Crate also helps a tiny bit. It's, you know, it's something. Uh, it's slightly difficult for people to unlock, but it does help. Um, and as far as uh, other boxes go, that's the only one that will really do anything towards trapping. I mean... Yeah, none of these other boxes. I guess the, the percent all stat you get from that will help with the agi. But again, agility's effect on um, trapping doesn't do too much. While we're in World 2, the arcade does have a couple small bonuses towards catching. Or trapping. Gosh, ugh, I'm sorry. Um, trapping as well. The shiny chance one is actually pretty nice. Um, the catching XP, or trapping XP one is pretty minimal. Uh, so you want to push those as you can. For World 3, you want your Skilled Dimwit. When placing traps, you want Skilled Dimwit. Uh, you'll want Unending Energy. And uh, 
And for trapping in general, you'll want access to Shiny Snitch, and you'll want to max it. Shiny Snitch is very strong, but early game, it's kind of hard to unlock. Um, so, uh, and you'll definitely want Unending Energy. There's no downside to having it on. Um, so yeah, that will be the um, the uh, prayers that you want on. As far as other things go, you'll want to book some talents. So while we're here, I'll talk about which talents you'll want to prioritize while booking. Uh, for any archers, so this includes bowmen, you'll want elusive efficiency. It helps both of them. Uh, any agility as well helps. Again, minimal. In tab two, you're basically just gated to the agility or the the two agility ones, uh, and then the skilling XP ones should help as well. So those will be good. For Hunter specifically, you'll want Invasive Species, Eagle Eye, always uh, as high as you can, Trapping XP Gain, and Critter Effect. These three will be nice for you, and then obviously just get some more agility So from this bubble, or talent. Um, for Hunter, or for Beastmaster specifically, you'll want to get Symbols of Beyond at 160 as fast as you can. Um, the Family Guy skill will help Hunter because it'll help your skill efficiency here. Uh, and then these two as well will help towards trapping. For star talents, you'll want super source uh, maxed. It's a good chunk of uh, uh, base efficiency. And same thing with toilet paper postage. Those are the uh, two most important towards trapping. Nothing else in here really does much. So, OK, so and uh, trapping. Let's talk about the trapping drone. So. This 90% extra critters from all traps, you don't need to use the uh, the trapping drone to get that bonus. You just get that bonus automatically by upgrading the building. Um, when you place the traps, you'll have that bonus applied. So you'll definitely want that up building upgraded as far as you can. It's pretty pricey, but late game you'll be able to push it pretty easily. Um, and then we will talk more about the trapping drone in a little bit when we're actually putting tra traps down. But it's good for... Um, deleting mass traps. I guess Eagle Eye also does the same thing, but you can delete all your traps here and then place your traps at ease. Um, the only downside is you can't actually check your traps shiny percent, or yeah, your shiny percent chance. You'll have to go towards or to the trap directly to check that, but I'll go over um, bonuses towards that. So Anyway, on to World 4. <clears throat> For World 4, we have meals. Uh, the skill efficiency meals, all three of them will help. So we're talking corn, uh, rice ball, and whipped cocoa. Ooh, there it is. And then the sea urchin specifically helps with critters from traps. This one is a pretty pricey meal, to be honest, uh, but you definitely want to upgrade it. It's a, it's a good one. So uh, Then we have lab bonuses. For lab, you'll want the uh, efficiency node active. You'll want your doubled vials because the honk vial is very, very strong. Um, and you'll always want your vials doubled for uh, poison tincture um, whenever you're collecting. But while you're placing traps, the goosey glug is insane. So you'll definitely want that upgraded as high as you can and doubled because this is one of the only things that affects base critters, which everything else multiplies. So quite strong. Quite strong indeed. Um, as far as vials go, I believe those are the only two that affect trapping. I mean, there's a couple that give you like shiny chance, like this one um, and this one. And you'll want those doubled as well. Uh, they help, but it's not a huge deal. <clears throat> Basically, shinies matter until they don't. Uh, towards mid-game, shinies start being less useful with the only one being poison frog to push that the poison frog vial specifically so <clears throat> you'll definitely want the uh, vials doubled you'll also want your stamps doubled as well uh, that'll help with a little bit of efficiency so yeah and then percent stats will slightly help your efficiency but those are the important ones um, for chips, as far as they go, uh, I found the uh, one, you want at least one doubler on troll. Then you'll want a star sign doubler because the star sign <clears throat> gives you percent critters. That is way bigger than any efficiency bonus can be. Um, 
So in terms of priority, it goes uh, one star sign doubler or one card doubler on troll, one star sign doubler, and then I was finding that base efficiency was actually more beneficial than even doubling the 35 percent efficiency card and that's just due to which like the cards are additive to more things than the uh base efficiency or the percent efficiency is so <clears throat> if you have a lot of these just basically toss them on they're really strong here and if not you'll want to put the uh you'll you'll want to double the 35 percent card and then you'll want to double or then you'll want to just pump it with uh total skilling efficiency chips um but as far as goes, none of the other chips really do too much here. The trophy doubler doesn't like tr doubling Critter Baron. Unfortunately, doesn't really help just because ad agility has like such a low effect on um, trapping efficiency, especially when you have a lot of trapping efficiency. Um, same thing with keychains. The only keychains that really benefit is percent agi, and again, not particularly relevant. Um, same thing with pendant. So. So those are the chips. It's actually pretty simple. Just pump as many efficiency chips as you have access to. So I would have put another base efficiency here if I had it, and probably here as well. So Okay, so that is world four bonuses down. Let's talk uh, gear. As far as gear goes, you want your serrated rex rings, with agility preferably. Um, and e-font wings actually helps a lot. Well, a lot, a, a decent chunk. So we have 27 mil here, and you'll see we're going from 25.2 mil to, to 27 mil. It's a, it's a decent chunk of uh, efficiency. Thankfully, E-Font Wings are the easiest to farm, in my opinion. You just get a lot more desert keys than you do of other keys. They're just a lot easier to farm due to Biggie and Dute dropping a ton. Um, and Colosseum 2 being quite uh, cheap to run giving you a, a biggie kill. Um, and then you'll want uh, your tool. Your tool being uh, your best trap you have access to. Uh, you don't need to make a ton of these per character. Like, eventually you'll want to. It's just nice to have the stats. But you can just take the tool off and give it to someone else. So, like, you see how I have a meaty trap in my inventory. I'm actually just using this trap from another character. So... Um, you just need to really make one of the best tier trap and then, you know, work up to giving all of your characters the best one just for the stats. Um, but you do want access to the highest tier tra trap you have access to. So, um, and as far as agility goes, uh, this is, so we're at 35, 52, 27 mil. Let's just, you know, drop 300 agility. We dropped 0.1 mil. So agility really doesn't do too much towards trapping efficiency. You can optimize it. You can push really high agility numbers. Just don't really worry about it, in my opinion, though. Uh, for your sanity's sake, it's not all that relevant. <clears throat> so. Um, next up on the list, we have cards. Uh, like I said, you want to double troll card if you have access to it. Next off, you'll want to put the trapping efficiency cards and the trapping XP cards. Uh, you'll notice I don't have any of the shiny critter chance cards, and I will talk about that in a little bit, but basically they don't matter when you're placing the trap down. And I will go over that. That's something called snapshotting, so we'll, we'll go over that in depth, but just know that you don't need those cards when placing the traps down. So you'll see that we don't really have a ton of cards to choose from. We just put the trapping efficiency ones, and I am doubling the dung beetle as well. And then for trapping... Um, set bonus, uh, I'm going skill efficiency over skill XP gain. Uh, skill efficiency, I would just rather have more critters than the XP gain. The XP gain is additive, it's not particularly great, so yeah, just going over, just going for uh, higher critters. So, so that will be the cards and card set you use. Um, and as a final note, make sure that you have your maestro hand bonus on if you have your maestro over your uh, other characters. You'll definitely want to push for that. It is uh, beneficial. The nice little jump. So, all right. So without further ado, we can go start placing some traps. Um, so when I'm choosing traps to place, let's let's go ahead and go to the critter or the uh, trapping drone, so we can talk about this. 
<sighs> so we'll talk about the critters in order. The froges. Um, definitely, I would tra I would trap these pretty much forever. Uh, early on, you'll obviously want them a lot, but froges in general, quite good. Um, you'll want them basically, basically forever. They they're constantly pushing your um, trapping efficiency on your hunter or hunters up, and they're useful for the uh, brutally spears bubble, which is a decent chunk of uh, base or uh, base damage, uh, percent damage. And you can get a ton of them, so pushing that bubble is pretty easy. So if you're lacking in damage, it's quite nice. You'll also need them for various upgrades throughout. Like um, there's a couple recipes that smithing recipes that need them. Uh, you'll need it to max your fireball tower, uh, your salt lick, you know, stuff like that. So you'll definitely want a good chunk of them for quite a lot of the early game, but even late game, you'll still want them just because they push your um trapping efficiency higher which while trapping efficiency doesn't really matter that much you definitely want some like you, you don't want to just not ig like ignore it completely so froge is good i would definitely trap them for quite a long time crabos uh crabos early game and mid game you'll be trapping a lot of them they'll help you push your call me pope bubble and your high box stamp um but as far and then you'll also need them for uh salt lick and some chips need them as well, some uh, smithing recipes. So you'll definitely want a lot of them, but late game, you won't really be using them as much. Your Call Me Pope bubble will become, in my opinion, too expensive to reasonably push, um, just because trapping is a lot slower than things that you can just print via the 3D printer. So you'll want Crabos early mid game, and then later on, you could still trap some of them, because you, you might be able to get like, you might be able to bank up for like a, a level here and there, but your no bubble left behind will be pushing call me pope later on so so scorpies uh you'll want basically always they are a um refinery material um so you'll always want some on hand they also push the big game hunter and the uh, purple frog stamp both of which are again nice early in mid game and you'll also need them when baking your storm collar and storm collar is quite strong so you'll want as many as you can till you max out your storm collar. So yep, scorpies definitely want at least some on hand. Uh, early mid game you'll want a, a good chunk of them, and then late game you'll at least want you know one or two traps on on scorpies. Mousies, um, mousies is a good one. Early and mid game you actually can not focus it too hard. Uh, they are for purple salt synthesis. So you'll want some on hand, but it's more end game that you would be pushing the salt lick bonus, which is a huge um, resource sink of them. Uh, they also help the uh, stamp and the buff boy talent. Um, so you'll want them on hand for those as well. Uh, and there's also an, an alchemy vial, but it's not particularly relevant. Uh, Alios. Uh, this one's one of the first ones that you can kind of just get as many as you need and then ignore forever basically you'll want as as many as you can for the uh shiny crab stamp um to a wait no is shiny crab stamp no that's on the table never mind um you'll just want them for the green bargain actually uh you'll have a quest that has them and then the green bargain bubble the green bargain bubble will become way too expensive and you can just ignore owls completely and for miner vowels you only need them for uh basically two smithing items so alios you could actually just basically ignore completely uh late game early game you'll just want to have enough to uh push your your cost reduction bubble penguin uh you'll want it's like a mid to late game thing that's a trap uh just because it's it's a nice um uh, salt lick bonus but uh, it gives you percent damage uh you could put excess penguins in there uh, you'll need some for critter pouches very very good to have and the yellow bargain bubble again you'll push the yellow bargain bubble until you're unable to really push it anymore bunnies another one that you can kind of just ignore uh they have a stamp and um a vial a vial sucks the you need them for smithing a uh mage weapon and the stamp is minimal increase you can push the stamp to a reasonable level and then kind of forget bunnies exist and then per bunny basically is only for the quest so 
Dung Beetles. So Dung Beetles early game, not that great. They only are used for the quest. Late game, the Prima Green bubble that you unlock, the World 4 bubble. For archers, insane. Very, very strong bubble. You'll want to be trapping Dung Beetles late game. Honkers, again, Honker Vial is insane. You'll be wanting to push Honkers to the moon. Um, I would say, you know, get that vial to at least one mil. I haven't done that yet, but at least one mil, and then I'm probably going to go for five mil. Uh, but basically, you're always going to be wanting to trap honkers later on. Um, and early game, honestly, you'll want to be pushing and unlo unlocking and pushing that vial as quick as you can. Uh, blobfish is required for a ton of late game uh, recipes and petting the rift. So if that alchemy bubble ends up being really strong, we'll want them for there too. Highly recommend stockpiling as many um, blobfish as you can. So so yeah, that's basically the ones to trap and when you should trap them. I did. It was a bit longer there, but I did have requests about people asking what I want to trap when, so hopefully that kind of goes through the thought process of what you what you want so without further ado let's go ahead and play some traps let's go talk so i would use the the the, the drone uh normally i would use it but i want to actually go show something called snapshotting so let's go ahead and oops and i guess we'll, while we're here we could talk about the the trapping mini game. As far as the trapping mini game goes, it's quite difficult in my opinion. Uh, you'll want to try to push to about 125 as far as the bonuses go. Um, there are a couple good bonuses after 125, but 125 is like the last, in my opinion, reasonable bonus to obtain, and it's quite a good one. So, uh, as far as traps go, I am going to go with a 40-hour trap because. I like putting my characters who are in lab with the 40 hours AFK sign to get a time candy. And, you know, those line up really nicely. They're, you know, the 20 minute traps are going to be more efficient, uh, but you're more susceptible to burning out <laughs> if you're doing 20 minute traps. So let's talk about snapshotting. It's uh, the, the, the elephant in the room. When you are placing a trap, certain values are saved, and they are they remain that way even if you change your character, um, even if you change your preset, everything. So the values are as follows. When I place this trap, this trap has now saved a whole bunch of values. You can see how many um, critters it saved. So I placed that trap at 27 million efficiency. Let me just swap my card set out to something blank. You'll see that the number of critters has not changed. The reason why is because my efficiency was saved on placing that trap. Same thing with my XP. The XP I had was that was going to gain from it saved on placing that trap. The number of critters uh, also, like percent critters, all that, even like the hog vial, again, saved on placing the trap. The shiny talent for hunters saved on placing the trap. Uh, I can swap my uh, preset and show you it, and that it is saved. So um, then the shiny buh, chance from the bubble as well is saved on placing trap. What isn't saved is shiny chance cards. So pretty much no matter what, I'm going to have 100% um, on froges. So let's go to blobfish so we can show what I mean. So let's go ahead and place a trap. All right, you see I have 69.7% chance to get the shiny. Um, but, and I'm on a shiny ch chance preset. If I swap over to this one, which has efficiency, you'll see that the critters didn't change, but my shiny chance did in decrease. Now let's place, you know, one with higher efficiency, 31.4. And if I swap to that preset, you'll see, there we go, 69.7. So shiny uh, chance from cards is on claim. When you claim the traps, these are, these are taken into account. Same thing with prayer. Uh, so shiny snitch, reducing your shiny chance, is on claim. And the uh, food, 
Um, this, uh, where is it? Shiny Nom Nums. This increases your shiny odds. That is also checked on claim. So, everything pretty much that's relevant is checked when you place the trap. Uh, you know, how many critters are you getting per trap? All that stuff. Except shiny chance from cards, food, and prayer. Now, hopefully I didn't miss anything there, but that should be a pretty good, um, easy to understand understand effect of what the snapshotting is doing so um which brings us to the question of should you always level your shiny uh snitch in my opinion yes you'll see even with so this is a maxed shiny snitch i still have a fairly high chance of catching um these these shinies uh this is good because if I didn't have the prayer max, I would have 100%, and I would be losing out on potential shinies. So you'll always want to have the prayer max to do to that, or, or as hard as you can push it. You know, not everyone just has a ton of green souls lying around. So yeah, basically push the shiny system when you're able to. You will benefit in the long run. So that is basically the gist of what to trap when and how to push trapping efficiency as high as you can and then from there it's basically on personal preference you know what tr what critters you need when um if you need shinies specifically you're going to want to place them place the traps down with your hunter the hunter will have the highest chance of obtaining shinies specifically because of reflective eyesight your bowman will also have quite a strong chance of getting um, shinies as well, because it will benefit from having this multiplying your... Because I catch them all bubble. So bowmen and archers in general will, will benefit from this. Siegebreaker as well. So that is definitely um, something to note. If you're lacking on shinies, you'll want to prioritize placing those traps down with your archers. Uh little bit of a no-brainer but and then when you're when you're collecting the traps you'll want the shiny snitch on whoever's collecting so i could go place a trap down on my maestro and not have shiny snitch down but if my hunter collects that trap the shiny snitch will apply to that maestro's a trap so so yeah uh that was basically all i have to say on trapping um Hopefully that was as concise as I could make it, and hopefully I didn't miss anything too important. Uh, trapping, not terribly um, complicated, and basically what you go about trapping is preference-based. Like for me personally, uh, something I like doing is placing, you know, something like um, like a strategy I like employing is like one of the highest level trap on this, like on each character. So that they're constantly getting good XP. You see the XP from this is 86.1k versus if I just went all frogs, 491. So if I put only just frogs on this character, this character's uh, trapping skill will basically never increase. Which could be a problem as Lava introduces more higher tier traps. So I like planning for the future. I want to be pushing hunter level or uh, trapping level constantly. So I like mixing um traps around uh, basically like if i want you know there's 10 critters i could go but you have a uh, eight eight traps in total um like i could give every single one of my characters one blobfish to trap and one honker to trap and one dung beetle to trap and then you know throw in like three frogs here two frogs here or whatever if that makes sense you'll, you'll definitely want to mix up the traps you don't want to just go all frogs on one character all blobfish on another character because then the trapping levels will be very skewed and you might need to basically fix it later on um and that will be less efficient overall so um, yeah, there's a, there's probably other things I could talk about as well, but uh, hopefully everyone could just ask in the comments uh, if you have any questions. Uh, again, trapping, it's one of those things where there's a bunch of nuances to it, but hopefully this answers a lot of the common questions. So, anywho, uh, thank you all for watching, have a good day.